Welcome to Web Browser Basics for everybody. Um, so today, uh, our course is going to be something very simple um, on how to use a web browser. So the agenda for today, uh, I'm going to show you with my computer uh, what these things are. Um, so we're going to go over what is a web browser, what the URL is, um, what or the address bar, uh, links, your navigation buttons, tabbed browsing, bookmarks and history, uh, downloading files and saving images. I'm hoping to get to the, all of these uh, items today. Um, so this is what we're going to do. Let's see. So uh, before I switch over to my browser, uh, I wanted to share with you what I'm a web. So basically, a web browser itself um, is something that allows you to go on the internet. Uh, there are many different types of web browsers um, depending on your preference or uh, whatever ecosystem you're in, uh, like the classroom this morning. Um, for example, if you're in the app, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, or uh, you would most likely use uh, Safari as it's already on your devices. Um, if you have a PC uh, or a Microsoft device, most likely it's going to be Internet Explorer. Um, or it's going to be uh, Microsoft Edge. Um, and then there is Google Chrome, uh, which is uh, the Google web browser. So those three are part of the big main ones. And then um, there are some independent ones that are standalone, not part of an ecosystem, uh, such as Mozilla, um, such as Firefox. Um, and I learned a new one the other day. It's called Brave Browser. Um, and there's also, oh, DuckDuck. Go has a browser now, too. So there's all these different types of web browsers. Um, so it's basically, they all allow you access to the internet. It's like saying there's different car manufacturers that allow you to drive. So if you like driving Toyotas, there's Toyotas. If you like driving Hondas, there's Hondas. If you like driving Ford, there's Ford cars. These are all vehicles that allow you to get to the internet. Um, you know, that's different flavors for different uh, preferences. Okay, so let's go to let's 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 go to my browser. Here you will see and this is my browser, okay? So this is the browser I use. This is called Google Chrome. Um, and this is in the Google ecosystem. So what it allows it to do is to have everything in one place. Um, let me try to make this smaller. OK. Um, and you would log in with your um, Google or your Gmail. So but let's do, let's do this first. Let's go. I said, let's go over what the URL is first. So here, uh, do you see this part where it's flashing, uh, this top part uh, where this little G is? This here on this top rectangle on top, all the way on top here uh, next to this G is the URL bar. So URL um, is the official name of URL, or the, it's an acronym for uh, universe, Uniform Resource Locator. So what a URL in uh, layman's term is, basically this is the, um, the house address of a web page. So for example, if you live at 100 Larkin Street, which is the San Francisco Main Library, um, and you want to get there, you would type that into your maps, and you would find that. So for example, if you want to find a web page, uh, you need to know the address. So for example, um, you would say, I want to go to the main library's web page, and then that'll be www.sfpl.org. And that will bring you to the library's website here. Um, and the thing is that also a lot of the browsers now, um, this bar here on top where you type in the URL, uh, there are also search bars now. So before, before um, we would have to go to like either Google, google.com, and then from Google you would go here, and this is the search, right? So you'd be like, uh, what is a URL? Um, and you get to type it in there. But now, all that, that you could simplify that step by just typing in here, what is a URL? Um, and so now the URL bar functions as two different things, not just as 
um, finding a place, but also using it as Google search. Um, and let's see. Okay. So what is a link? So you're like, okay, well, people may say like, uh, what is a link? Well, what do I do? Uh, where do I click? So for, if I show you here on the library website. So links usually, usually, um, usually have a blue line. Um, and if they don't have a blue line, so example here, do you see this here on top? It says, uh, virtual programs now available. Please join us now online for story times, book clubs, and other virtual events. Visit our event calendar to learn more. So you see that this is all just text here, right? There's text, but all of a sudden, you see that there's a line underneath here. Uh, so you're like, hmm, what does this line mean? And then you see that this cursor, your cursor will change usually to a finger um, or another uh, cursor icon. And that means this is a link. So basically, if I click here, it will bring me to another page or a link. So it'll link me to another page. Um, so if you're ever reading something that's into, if you're ever reading a paragraph and you see like, oh, why is it blue? Like I said before, why is it blue or why is it underlined? And that means it's the link. So, but not every item, not every word or phrase that's on a web page um, might be a link. So, or might not have to have that. So for example, like here on here, uh, you'll see that these are blue, right? So this is blue, but look, if my cursor doesn't change when I click on it. So that means that's not a link. It's just that it just happens to be blue text. And then if I go down here, San Francisco, California, 94102, if I click on it, my cursor doesn't change. So that's not a link. But if I go up to this first one that's blue, you see how my cursor changed to a finger instead of this blinking, or instead of this, um, I guess it's called an eye. Um, but if I click on this, that's actually a link, and I'll bring me to a new page. So don't be frustrated. I know sometimes people are like, well, you know, I see it, but I can't click on it. Um, don't don't be worried. It might, it might not even be a link at all. It just might be that it's blue words, and it looks like a link, but it's not a link. Um, or, for example, like here on our website, sfpill.org, um, they might not be blue at all, and they might have underlined like this. These are tabs, and these are also links. So this will bring me to other pages. So books and media, I could click on here, catalog, and it'll open to another whole new page to a link, OK? So that's some things for you to know. Um, do not, don't worry about it. Um, so one more thing right here, let's say. This here is not blue, but it's underlined. So, and it, it becomes a finger so that I know that's the link, right? So I'm gonna click on that and that'll bring me to a new page. But then if I, if I go back here and I see this general recommendations, you see that my pointer, the arrow doesn't become a finger. See, it became a finger here when I went over the link. But when I go over here, it's still an arrow. So that's, and I can click on it, but it's not doing anything. So it's not a link and it won't bring me to another page. Um, another thing that I just showed you and I did um, is this up here. So this is a URL bar, remember? Um, and what's here on the URL bar next to it, you'll see that this is the back arrow. Um, and here it'll pop up as a question. Click to go back. Hold to see history. So if I click once, it'll bring me to the previous page, which was just SFPL. Uh, for Chrome, if I hold on to it, if I long hold, it'll show me all the different types of websites that I went on um, on my Chromebook. So here, it's like I, I remember I typed in what is a URL. Uh, I went to Google. So these are all the things that I went to recently um, on this browser. Um, this here, the button next to it, is the forward button. Uh, and if I hover over it, it's going to say, click to go forward, hold to see history. So same thing. If I press this arrow pointing to the right, it's going to bring me back to the Biblio comments or the catalog um, page. Um, and you, anytime you see this little circle here, um, this arrow with a circle, 
Um, this means it's going to reload the page. Um, for example, if we were uh, using um, some sort of website um, and you need to get updated information, um, sometimes when when this when this page loads, it might just be this is what it was the information at the time when you opened it. Um, so, for example, if you're trying to find out information like um, maybe if you're trying to buy concert tickets or you're trying to see if um, uh, if there's a vaccine appointment um, and something opens up. But the thing is that if you don't click reload, it might not show up there. It's kind of like your e email also. Um, when you open your email, it might be just that. Like when you opened it, it took all the email and put it, showed it in front of you. And if you're waiting for an email, sometimes you have to click, um, you have to click reload so that it gets the new information down, uh, gets the, picks up the new information and shows it to you. So another another comparison, another um, analogy would be like um, when you go down to your mailbox in your house and you open the mailbox, you'll see ten pieces of mail and you you know you take it out um, and then you go back into your house and you have ten pieces of mail still, but you're still waiting for another piece of mail. Um, so you're not going to look at the ten pieces of mail and wonder where my eleventh piece of mail is. Um, what you would do is that then you would go back to your mailbox. Um, outside of your house um, and then look for the 11th piece of mail. Uh, and that's kind of like what reloading does. Um, it, you go back and you look again or tell it to look again and to make sure that there is, if there is new data or new information. Um, so that's those three. Um, I also want to show you what tab browsing is. So here, if you look at my screen, you'll see that I have three things here, right? I have one, I have this up here. I have this uh, SFPL Biblio Commons. I also have this tab here, which is what I was showing you at first. This is the PowerPoint. So what are these things up here? These are called tabs. So this is called tab browsing. Um, I don't know if you remember before tabs, we used to have windows. Oh, well, we still have windows. This, this whole thing we're looking at right now is a window. Uh, within the windows, there's tabs. So it's kind of like uh, a manila, I think they're, well, they call it tabs because it's based off of like manila window, um, manila files that we put in. Manila files, yeah, manila files. Um, so these replicate that. Um, so if I click here, this plus, uh, if I hover over it, it's going to say new tab. So I can open a new tab. Um, and then from here, I can type in like, um, uh, I could type in, I could go to another website. So I could type in or go to um, uh, San Jose Public Library. And that will bring me to another page. And I could click on San Jose Public Library. So then here, I'll see that, look, I have this tab up here is San Jose Public Library, while the tab I had before was um, the presentation. So this is good for if you ever want to use multiple um, multiple, look at multiple things or compare things like, oh, what does San Jose Public have? What are they doing for um, SFP? So they, they call theirs um, Express Pickup and San Francisco Public Library calls theirs um, SFPL to go. Um, so from here, I want to show you how to open a new tab without pressing the plus button. Um, so what you can do um, if you ever want to open something without changing what you're on. So for example, like, oh, maybe I want to keep on looking on what's on San Jose Public Library's website. So if I click on here, like I click on indoor computer usage, it's just going to change everything here. It's going to change it to the indoor computers and printing page, right? Like, oh, but then I also wanted to read something. So I'm going to press this back button here. So like, maybe I want to read what's happening, but I also want to read about computers. Um, so what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to press I'm going to right click. So on your mouse, your mouse, um, you're going to right click uh, for Chrome. You're going to right click, and it's going to ask you, what do you want to do? So the computer wants to know, what do you want to do? So I'm going to tell this, uh, I'm going to tell Chrome that I want to open this to a new tab. So if I click on that, that's going to bring indoor computer usage to a new tab. So it's going to bring it to the one next to it. But I could still access what's here. So this is useful for if you want to, um, 
if you're you know looking through multiple things, um, but you don't want to go off of your search, this is good for that. Um, hey, another, Ali? hi, yes. All right, really quick. Uh, Carol wants me wants you to clarify where here is when you say here. Oh, okay. So, okay, let's. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I think the reason why is that, um, my thing popped up, and you guys, it's. Let me share my desktop. Hold on one second, okay? Let's change my share. Uh, new share desktop. Uh, share. Okay. You see my whole desktop now, right? Okay. I think that's. Thank you, Carol. I think it's the it's it's Zoom and the funny things of Zoom. Um, okay. So. Like I said before, here, let's let's backtrack. Okay. So indoor computer usage, right? If you click on it, it's just gonna bring you to indoor computer that page. But the thing is that I kind of look at two things at the same time. So I want to read this page or this tab, um, and I want to read about indoor computer usage. So I'm gonna right click. Do you see the pop-up right now where it says open link in new tab? Open link in new window, open link in incognito window, Jaina or Joseph? Say that again, Alan. Do you see the pop-up where it says open link in new tab or open link in new window? Yes. OK. So this, sorry, this is what I mean by here. OK. So once you right click it, um, it's Google Chrome is going to ask you what you want to do. So I'm going to tell it that I want to open this link in a new tab. And if I click on this, it's going to open another tab next to it. Um, and this is what the right click does. So there's also other things you can do. For example, you can click open link in new window. Um, so I could open a new window. It, it will automatically open a new window. And now you see that I have two sets of windows. I hope you're seeing my desktop. So now you see that from here. Let's try to dock this here. So now you see that it opened into a new window, which is this window here on the right. Um, and then let me show you that again. So for example, I'm gonna show you this again, okay? Right click. So new tab opened, new tab opened this, right? New tab opened another tab next to it, right? Um, but if I click on this and I right click it, and I click open new window, a new window is going to pop up, which is this. So this doesn't replace it. This is actually, it opened it as big. So if I minimize, if I make it smaller, this is the original one I was on, right? This one, and then this was the new one that opened as the new window. So right click. So you see this finger, how this over the indoor computer usage, it becomes, it's telling me this is the link. I'm going to right click it. And then these are the three options I have. New tab, open link in new tab, open link in new window, open link in incognito window. So if I click this one, open link in new tab, this will show up here next to it. Okay, we'll leave that alone. Let's go back here to this tab. Um, if I go over it again with my mouse and I right click it, I'm gonna tell it, I want to open this in a new window. I'm gonna click on that. All of a sudden, something's going to pop out at me again, right? And it's going to be like, oh, you're like saying, what happened to my other tabs? And so, but do you remember you clicked on new window? So this is what happened. So it opened a brand new window for you. So this was the original one here. And then now it creates a new window um, where you can look at it on a different window. So those are some options from your right click of tabbing. Um, I'm going to go on a quick tangent here and show you the other features of the right click. Um, so for example, if I go over, if I hover over here and I click on the right click, right? So these are some other things. There's one thing that I really like to use when I do right click. I do click, uh, I click this one, uh, search Google for indoor computer usage, okay? So what this is good for, it doesn't even have to be a link. Uh, for example, like I can click on, I can highlight something and do a right click too. Uh, for example, like I'm gonna highlight this word computer. Like maybe, maybe I'm learning English and I don't know what the word computer is. So I'm gonna highlight this word computer, right? Computer, let's see, I'm gonna highlight this one. So highlight is usually, if you hold down 
if you hold down the right, sorry, if you hold down the left button of your mouse and you go over with the cursor the word, so I, so I highlighted that, so now that's blue, and then now I'm gonna right click. So now it knows that this is not a link, so it doesn't give me, it doesn't let me open this in a new tab. It doesn't let me open this in a new window because they know this is not a tab. So what Google allows you to do is only these options, right? So for at first here, if I go up here to indoor computer usage, because I know this is a link, if I right click it, Google also knows, or Google Chrome knows, and it lets you, it lets you do all these functions. But I, I want to show you this, and I go over the word computer, it's only going to let me do these functions. So what I like about using Chrome is that it lets you search for Google. So now it's going to say, search Google for quote, quote, computer, unquote. And they'll magically search for what computer. So this is useful for uh, language learning. I use it a lot for language learning. Um, uh, and it's helpful for that. For example, like if I'm looking on, let's say, let's, let's turn this to, let's go on SFPL, for example, here. And for example, like maybe I'm learning Spanish. I change this to the Spanish website. Um, and I'm like looking at these books and then I'm like, oh, I don't know what um, resentimente means. Like maybe I know what liberals means, but I'm like, hmm, what does this word mean? If I hover over it, I know it's not a link because I'm, uh, I, it doesn't become a finger so I can't click on it, but I can highlight it by holding on the left button, left, the left button on the mouse. I go over it so it highlights it. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to right click it with my mouse. So right click it. And Google Chrome is going to tell me these are the things you can do. You can copy this so that I can paste it somewhere else. Um, but I'm going to say search Google for this word. And Google will, Google will automatically translate it for me as one of the options first. Um, here on top, it's going to say that uh, recentemente. So if I click on this, if I click on this thing, it's going to let me listen to it. Um, and that's going to translate to the word recently. So this is one way you can use it too. Um, and, and that's part of um, tab browsing and opening up and up tabs, okay? Um, so going back on track now, uh, let's go over what uh, the history and the bookmark is. So for example, I'm going to go back to the SFPL web page now. So let's click on this tab here. Okay, so now uh, for the sake of me understanding, I'm going to change this back to English. So we're going to click on English. So for example, like, oh, um, uh, I want to open to the catalog every single time. So sfpl.org, right? So this is the library's website. But the thing is that this doesn't open to Biblio Commons, which is our catalog. Um, so instead of opening up to this web page every time, whereas all these things, I just want to go straight to the catalog. Um, so I'm going to go back to the catalog. So I'm going to click books, catalog. So now you see that the URL up here changed, right? Now the now this address, the address of this website is called um, https sfpl.bibliocommons.com. While if I click on the back button, it will tell me that the address of the library website is https.sfpl.org. So you don't need to remember that. Um, so I'm going to say, I want to, every single time, I want to go to this instead, right? So I'm going to click on the star here. And if I hover over it, it's going to say, that will make it a bookmark or a favorite. Um, so I'm going to click on, I'm going to click on it, uh, left click once. Uh, and it's going to say bookmark added. So I've added the bookmark. And then it's going to ask me, well, do you want to name it? So it's going to name it automatically as what the website is. So it's going to say recent activity SFPL. So I could, I could rename it if I want to. So I might say like uh, SFPL catalog. So I know that every single time when, I, when I'm here, it'll bring me to the catalog. And it, it asks you, where do you want to put this? So I'm going to just say put it in the bookmarks bar, or I can choose somewhere else where it wants to be. Um, so I can make a folder if I want of like all the different libraries, or if you're looking at, um, if you're looking at like, uh, 
if you want to categorize things like, oh, maybe this is my favorite shop I like to shop at. Maybe this is Macy's, and I'm going to put uh, all my clothing uh, websites on one bookmark, so I know that, or one folder, and all my bookmarks are in this folder for online shopping, which is perfectly fine. You don't have to do that, but you can. Uh, or you could just put it here. Let's so uh, let's go back here, uh, and I'm gonna click done right here. So now, if I want to go to my favorites, let's see, where did my bookmarks go? Okay, um, to, let's do that, perfect. Okay, so here you'll see these three dots, right, on the top right-hand corner. Um, at first, I had my bookmarks bar turned off, so you couldn't see it, right? So here, where it says show bookmarks bar, I turned that on, so you see the check mark here? That means it's on. So you'll see here on the top left hand uh, corner, you'll see SFPL catalog. That's what I typed in right. If I press this again, it's going to turn off. So all those bookmark, uh, that one bookmark and the whole bar is going to be gone. So let's do that again. Uh, three dots, bookmarks, show bookmark bar. So I know that here, if I ever need to go quickly to here, I'll click that. So let's, for example, let's say, Let's say I'm just on Google, and then I'm like, oh, I just need to get this book. And, I, and I'm going to click right here. I don't even have to type in SFPL anymore. I'm just going to click right here where the bookmark bar is, and that will bring me straight to the uh, library catalog that I went to look for a book. Um, so you can have multiple, you can have multiple ones. So like, for example, I'm going to go to this, the San Jose Public Library tab right here. So I'm going to click on this tab right here and say, for example, like, hey, I want to bookmark this page also. So like I said before, we're going to go over to this star. Um, depending, most likely it's going to give my star, it's going to look like a book with a little tab, like a bookmark. Uh, these are, they're used in the interchangeably favorite and bookmark. Uh, so I'm going to click on it with my left click on my mouse, and it's going to say bookmark added. Um, but then you want to name it. So instead of saying home uh, San Jose Public Library, I'm just going to name this um, SJPL, San Jose Public Library. Click done. So now you see that here, magically, another tab, another bookmark appeared. Sorry, not a tab, but bookmark or favorite appeared right here. So I know I could click on that and that'll bring me back to the exact same page. Or, for example, um, if I'm here, like I'm doing something on San Francisco Public or uh, San Jose Public Library, but then I want to look at the San Francisco one at the same time. What I can do is I could click here as it was here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you that we can hover over the bookmark right here. This, this is the bookmark we created, right? So instead of instead of left clicking to bring us there. And that will change the page I'm on, right? We don't. Uh, I'm going to show you that if we go over it with a right click, so right click, right, not left, right click. Um, you can do the same things at first. Like remember, open a new tab, open a new window. So I can open a new tab, and now it's going to bring me this tab here to the catalog. So now I have two of them open: this one and this one. So the second tab and the sixth tab are both the same. San Francisco Public Library catalog, which is perfectly fine. Um, let's see. And then what else do I want to show you? Oh, um, downloading files. Let's see. Let me find some things down. Let me think of a thing that we want down. Oh, OK. Um, let's see. I click on. Hey, hey, Alan. Yes, hi. Someone was asking if you could show how to download a different browser. So maybe you could do that. Yeah, let's see. Um, I could try to do that. Um, I will let you know I'm also working on a Chromebook right now, so that might not work, but let's try it together. Um, so I'm going to look for, I'm um, thinking of Duck, Duck, Duck Go Browser, which is another browser. Uh, whoops, browser, browser. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to click on this, DuckDuckGo, Privacy Simplified, and I can add that to Chrome, but that's not going to work. That's an extension. Let's, uh, let's try this. Um, 
I'm going to say, unfortunately, I can't show it on here um, because I am on a Chromebook. Uh, and Chromebook is a web-based computer or a web-based device. So it doesn't really store any applications or, and I can't download anything. Download, oops, not edge for business. Download now. Yeah, so it's it's not gonna let me download. Oh no, nope, let's try. Da Platform Windows and Mac. So Microsoft Edge, which is the new Internet Explorer, uh, lets you download for either Mac or for Windows, not for a Chromebook. Um, I don't think Safari, which is another popular browser, Apple Safari browser. So let's see, Apple. Um, you can try Firefox. I'm pretty sure they have an application for. <laughs> okay, uh, that one's not gonna work. Firefox download. Okay, so I'm gonna click, let's see. Oh, download Firefox, let's try that, okay. So download Firefox, I clicked on that, almost there installing. So you'll see that it pops up here, it's downloading, um, and this will give me a new and a different browser on my computer. Let's see, now it's running, it's running. Dun, dun, dun. But so depending on the device you have, there might be limitations on what browser you can use. Um, I'm, I use a Chromebook um, at work, we use, um, PC, uh, and on a PC, you can use Google Chrome, you could use um, Firefox, you could use Microsoft Edge, you could use Internet Explorer. So the download's complete. Uh, let's see, open. No, it's not going to work, Jaina. Um, so hmm. yeah, it's, okay. I'm on a Chromebook. It's fine. It's 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 because I'm on a Chromebook. Um, yeah. So. Chromebooks are also web-based, um, and it's not going to work. But let's let's. I'll show you how to download something different. Um, okay. okay, Alan, really quick. If you Google um, download Firefox for Chromebook, there should be a link directly. Ah, that's different. Like now, okay. Get Firefox for Chromebook. Uh, get Firefox desktop for Chromebook. Okay, let's click on that. Download Firefox. Is it downloading? It's the same one. It's the huh. same. One. See. Interesting. Okay. okay. Well, not gonna, not gonna work on my Chromebook. Okay. Okay. Um, how Let about me... somebody asked if you could try to download an SF Chronicle issue? Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do SF. I was gonna show how to download an image, but let's do SF Chronicle. Let's see if we could do that. Uh, so let's say we find an issue of uh, SF Chronicle. Oops. Let's just type in SF Chronicle. So for example, I open the news. I'm reading the Chronicle. Um, I want to read about. Hopefully, there's not a paywall. Uh, perfect. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, there's no paywall. Okay, perfect. So I want to read about, um, here's where household water use is highest in California, right? Um, so let's close this paywall. Okay. Um, if I cl click on usually the three dots is usually where I want to, so that's going to be science, that's going to be commenting. So I don't want to do commenting. I want to download. So let's click, let's look at the article together. Um, That's okay. Let's go to, let's use the library's chronicle, uh, sfpl.org. Uh, let's see, research and learn, e magazines and e news. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on chronicle, SF chronicle, current and historical. Please don't let, make me log in. Let's take a look, click on that. 
Ah, it doesn't because I'm on the library Wi-Fi. Okay. So for example, I want to read about the California Chronicle. Um, so I'm going to click on, so if you, you'll see that there are four news bank. Let's see, this is a, a newspaper database that we have at the library. Um, uh, be careful and be mindful of what you choose here. Uh, there's four sources. Um, one of them is for current, 1985 to current, but this is the text format. Well, this one, 2017 to current, this is the image format. So let's click on the image format. So if I click on that, I should be looking at pictures of the newspaper. So today is what, the 15th? I click on that. So this one will let me read the newspaper as if I had the actual at newspaper in my hand. And you want to know how to download it. So if we're doing it this way, you can use what if the app has if the app is providing it. So or if the website's providing it. Uh, here you can clip it, you can print, but we want to take download. So let's click on the download button and see what happens. So I'm going to say download. So it's going to say, do you want to download this whole page or you want to just select a clip? So for example, like, hey, I want to, I want this picture of this just this tree. Uh, I can select a clip. Um, and then I can just go in here and just do that. I can save that. Or I could say, I want to download the full page. I just want this front page. So I'm going to click download full page. Uh, and that's going to ask you, do you want to download this to your drive or you want to download this to as a PDF? So I'm going to say let's download it as a PDF. I'm going to click on that. Uh, I don't need citations. I'm not doing a research paper. I'm going to click download. And then now it's going to say downloading full page. And then it's going to show up in my download folders, which I'll show you in one second after it downloads. OK, so now you see this pop up here. Um, so on my Chromebook, or depending on where you are, on either you're using a PC or if you're using a Mac device, um, it might be in your downloads folder. So mine's is here because I'm using a Chromebook. So this will be under a Chromebook. It'll be under my files, my downloads. Um, if you're in a PC, uh, it should be under my computer um, and then downloads. So look for the Manila folder on the bottom left-hand corner. Um, you'll see like a Manila folder icon. And then if you click on that, there should be one, something that says downloads. So here, you see that the article I just downloaded is a PDF here because it's under my downloads. And this will open the PDF that I just saved. Um, and that's how I downloaded that. But let me show you something else that might be a bit more easy accessible. Uh, for example, if I'm on Google, and let's say I, I, I'm looking for, let's say Mother's Day just passed, right? So let's say Mother's Day. And I want to find a picture of, I want to make a Mother's Day card or a picture. I type in Mother's Day. And then I want to find an image so I could print out for my mom. So let's say, hey, I really like this one that says Happy Mother's Day in the middle, right? This one right here. Um, so I'm going to click on it with my left click button. And I want to download this. Or I want to save it to my computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. So right click, and it gives you all these options you can do, right? So do I want to open this in a new tab? Yes, you can do that too. And that open this is a new tab right here. So this is from the website it was from. So this opens it in a new tab, right? Um, and if I right click it, uh, what I can do down here is I can save image as. So I can click on this button, save image as. And it's going to be like here. It's going to save it to my downloads. Um, and I could say this is, uh, and it already named it the file for me here. So I'm just going to click Save and Show in Folder. And it's going to say, this is my picture that I saved to my computer, um, locally on my computer. Um, and this is next to that. So that's one way for doing that. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat box, or please feel free to unmute and or turn on your camera. Uh, I did see a question before I forget from, I think, was that David? Oopsies. Was that David or was that? 
Um, David, yes, where was the Mother's Day image stored? So for me, on my Chromebook, it was stored in my folders, my download folders. Um, if you're still looking at my, des my desktop, you'll see it right here. Uh, under my files, under downloads, you see that here is my picture for my Mother's Day. Uh, if you're on a PC, um, it should be on the bottom left-hand corner under look for a manila folder icon and under your files. And in there, there should be a download button there uh, or downloads, and it should be saved there. Um, and let's see. Uh, I see one more question. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. What are the major differences among web browsers um, from Enon? It's usually a preference, and it's also depending on the ecosystem you're in. If you're in an Apple ecosystem or you use Apple products, um, for example, if you use Safari, if you're on Safari on your phone, um, there is, and you're out on, you're riding the bus and you're reading a website, and then you get home, but you don't want to read on your iPhone anymore because it's too small. So then you open your iPad, and then if you open Safari on your iPad, uh, it, will, it will already be there. Um, or if you're on, so that's for Apple products. If you're on Chrome, you can also use Chrome on your iPhone, um, and then you can use it from your iPhone to um, your computer desktop there. Uh, I see Wendy. Hi, Wendy again. Uh, about Mozilla and Firefox. Um, so Mozilla and Mozilla... Firefox, uh, it's different browsers. Uh, they're, they're kind of independent and not part of an ecosystem. So um, it's, it's less of a, I wouldn't say it's less of a seamless experience, but it's less of a tailored experience um, where Google Chrome might know of your search history or of your uh, YouTube browsing habits or Apple knows of this. Um, and they might be able to tailor it more. But let's show it on my screen, actually. So Firefox is a different browser that we were trying to download at first, but it didn't work. Um, and they are touting, let's see, they are touting about, let's see, they have different trackers. So they have, they, they block trackers. So websites can't track you. Um, and they also offer a password. They also offer to save your passwords for you, which um, Apple and Google does also. Um, and it's, 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 it's another, it's another browser, um, another company, uh, it's it's kind of like saying what's the difference you know between a Honda and a Toyota um, if you're if you have yeah um, like I said before there's also Brave browser that I, I just learned about um, they also do they also take they say they're faster than Chrome uh, they stop online surveillance uh, there are yeah there's multiple browsers um, and you don't have to use just Safari or just Chrome. Um, you can use what's comfortable for you. Um, uh, there's Opera. I remember this Opera browser. I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, but you know, you, you don't have to say you you don't have to say you can only stop. It's kind of saying like, you know, you have to shop at Trader Joe's. No, there's Trader Joe's. There's Safeway. Um, so I would be I I would go through and figure out what's better for you. Um, uh, sometimes some websites might show up better on a certain browser. Some of them don't on another browser. Um, and that's, you know, it's perfectly fine. It's also perfectly fine to use multiple browsers. Um, uh, you could use Chrome, you could use, um, Internet Explorer. Um, and that's perfectly fine too. Um, let's see, Diana, dun, dun, dun. I have a Chromebook. What do you mean when it's web-based? Uh, Chromebook, um, so uh, Chromebooks itself have very limited space on them where everything boots up and it's just connected from the internet. So if you're not connected to the internet, it's a very limited 
item on what you can do. For example, like if I was on a plane and there's no Wi-Fi and I open my Chromebook, there, it's a very limited things you can do. While if you have a PC or a Mac, um, you, there you could you could probably you could probably run games, you could probably watch videos um, if you've downloaded them onto your Chromebook or onto your PC. Um, there is space for you to download on Chromebooks, but very little space. Uh, that's kind of how they keep the money, uh, the costs down for Chromebooks. Um, uh, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? I see a question about, can multiple browsers be open at the same time? Yep, you can open Internet Explorer at this and Google Chrome at the same time. It's not gonna break your computer. Um, Tom says that if I try to save a web page sometime, I only see codes. What am I doing wrong? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's try to save this. For example, sfpl.org. Let's try to save this on my screen. Let's try to save this too. So not just bookmarking. Bookmarking was, we did that before, but you want to save it. Remove. Um, if I right click the whole page, so I'm, I'm guessing, um, for example, if you're on this page and you want to save this page, and that this is what you mean, uh, if I right click anywhere on the screen, this is my cursor, you see the black arrow in the middle now, if I right click it uh, and I click save as, um, and then in my downloads folder here, it's gonna I click on save. So now if I go into my folder where my, so let's close that first. I'm gonna close this. Okay. So now if I go back to my folder here, icon on the bottom, files, downloads, and this was that file I just saved, right? If I click on that, right click, it's gonna bring me here. It's gonna save it as a link for me. Um, so it might be, it might be the type of either a PC or a Mac that you're using that might be saving as code instead. Um, let's see, zoom. Uh, which browser is more user-friendly or easier for beginners? Um, it really depends. I, I personally prefer Google. I know some people have privacy issues with the Google. Um, I also know if you're using Apple devices and you're just using Safari, it might be easier because it's already there. Uh, it's built into their ecosystem. Um, but, you know, I would say either one of the major ones, uh, Apple, Safari, Google, Chrome, uh, Microsoft, Internet Explorer. Um, pick one of those. Or usually just use the one that's already on your computer. It's easier to. Yinan says, uh, the browsers are tracking content. How to protect privacy against tracking? Um, so it's... This this is a two you know, it's you, you can use one of the private browsers. Um, you could use DuckDuckGo; they don't track you. You could use Brave; they don't track you. If you're logged into Google Chrome with your Gmail account, it's very helpful because your search history is there. And for example, if you typed in, um, let's go to my page here. For example, like if you were here, and here on top here on top, right? So for example, like I want to remember, I can't remember, like I could say like, I don't remember what I what, what page I was on yesterday, but I remember it was something. Um, and you'll see that this little, you see this little clock here? That means this is in your history and this is what you've searched for. Um, so yes, they are tracking you. Um, but the thing is that this is something that re this helps you remember like, oh, you're on this website. Is this what you want to go to? Um, I, I personally like it because it helps. I, I don't bookmark everything, but sometimes I want to re go back to the same page and I'd be like, oh, like, oh, that newspaper article was the SF Chronicle and I could click on it and that'll bring me back there to the SF Chronicle. Um, or, you know, if you, if you, if you're shopping for, on different websites, and you can't remember which store it was, it'll, it'll have a history or um, of the sites you're at, and you can click on that. Um, so it's really, a, you know, it's, it's tracking, all the tracking's not bad. 
Um, I, I'm personally okay with it. I, ex I went through a time where I didn't, I went use DuckDuckGo or Bra a Brave and it was, it was hard for me to remember. I'm like, oh, was I on this web page or not? Um, let's see, can I have Google Chrome and DuckDuckGo or both? Yes, you can have both. Perfectly fine, you have multiple browsers. Um, let's see, Doug says, browser for Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi and doing banking attacks and social security are steps to that. Yes, uh, a VPN is great, a virtual, virtual, I can't remember what the P is. Uh, oh, virtual protocol network. Um, basically, that kind of throws, and that's tech talk now, throws you off or logs you in from a different place. Um, let's see. I will tell you this. Tenderloin Tech Lab right here. Tenderloin Tech Lab, they are actually seeing people in person. They're about two blocks away from us. And they have appointments available for from 2 to 4 p.m. on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, you can call this number, 415-592-2766. Um, and you can go in person there to get tech help. The Tenderloin Tech Lab is seeing patrons and are seeing people in person. So if you're near the main or you're near the Tenderloin, uh, give them a call. You could set up an appointment um, so they can help you with your tech devices um, until or we open. Um, but yeah. And that's that. Thank you, Jaina. And thank you, Joseph, for helping me moderate the chat. I hope to see you guys in person soon. We do miss you, our dear patrons. Thank you.